So let's talk about customers and sub customers. So really important. If you convert your QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks online, any jobs in QuickBooks desktop will now become sub customers. Sub customers are not the same as projects. So that's really important point, right? So you may see the customer, the column and the sub customer that that's not a project. A project is created separately. So you have to create every project one by one. There is no importing feature for projects. So if we are dealing with, again, if we are dealing with people that converted from QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks online, it is extremely important that you are aware that projects will not import and you have to create every project one by one. I had to do a big, uh, I had customer, I had to do a project where I had to import from desktop to online and I was uh, boasting about, you know, the new payroll job costing feature. My customer was really wait, literally waiting years to get payroll job costing into QuickBooks Online. We converted them over and he completely forgot that projects don't come. Every project had to be created. So if I knew that ahead of time, I could save a lot of aggravation on setting the expectations uh, ahead of time, okay? Um, let's see. Okay, so the next uh, uh, comment here is, or the next uh, point here is, sub-customers can be used to create multiple or different billing addresses, but you wanna avoid using sub-customers as a project or a job, because you you're not going to be able to get certain features that have to do with projects inside of a sub-customer. So you don't, make sure you don't create a sub-customer as a project. And the most confusing part is a sub-customer and a project can actually have the same name. So it will lend itself up to confusion if you create it as a sub-customer and a project. So we'll talk about that once we get into the in-product demo. Okay, so we are on QuickBooks Online and we're gonna be talking about uh, sub-customers and projects. So the first thing is you want to turn on projects. Now projects, it's on the left-hand side, that little tab that says projects and it says new next to it. So for some of you, it may not say new because you may have had it, had it enabled for a while. So you wanna, you, you do wanna check that, okay? Um, so to turn on projects, we're gonna click on the gear menu. So we're gonna click on the gear menu and then we're gonna click on account and settings. Account and settings. And then we're gonna click on advanced. So then you're gonna click on advanced and we're gonna go down to where it says projects and it says, organize all job related activities in one place. Okay, so it's a simple check on and check off. Make sure you have projects turned on. Now this is only available in the plus edition. So without plus, you really won't be able to uh, do all the stuff that we're gonna do. So those are projects. So I'm gonna go into my customer list. Okay, I'm gonna go into my customer list. So I'm gonna click on uh, sales and then customers. And then I'm gonna click on customers. And notice right now we have two customers, customer A and Kathy Paulson. If I click on the drop down menu and click on new customer, uh, let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a sub customer. So I'm gonna type sub customer, sub customer A. And then I'm gonna click on this little checkbox here that says is a sub customer and then click on Kathy Paulson. So this is a sub-customer of Kathy Paulson. This is not a project, and you don't wanna confuse this with a project. Now this right here, it's a really important uh, question. Bill with parent means if I receive a payment under Kathy Paulson, will I be able to apply that payment to the sub-customer? So if you want to receive a payment for Kathy Paulson, the customer, and you want that payment to be able to apply down to my sub-customer level, I wanna click on bill with parent. Also, when you create a statement, if you create a statement for, for the customer, it's gonna include all the sub-customers under it if I click bill with parent. If I click on bill this customer, it means I don't want to interchangeably apply a customer payment to, uh, to a sub-customer or a sub-customer's project uh, invoice, or I don't want them to be cross or mix in the customer statement. So that's what these two 
boxes are. So for now, I'm gonna click on build with parent, which is the default treatment, and then I'm gonna click on save. So the, the customer, I'm gonna click on uh, back here real quick. I'm gonna go back to Kathy Paulson. So I'm gonna go back to customers. So the customer is gonna say Kathy Paulson, sub customer A, and that's how it sub customers show. Now when I create a project, I'm gonna to go to projects here, and I'm gonna click on new project, and I'm gonna call this one sub customer A. Now I'm just doing this to confuse you here. I'm creating the project sub customer A, and notice that I can actually make a project with the name sub customer A under Kathy Paulson. If I click on save, notice that I created a project called sub customer A, and then when I go into sales, I see sub customer A, but this is not a project, okay? So it's really important to differentiate what's a sub customer and what's a project. In the customer screen here, you're only gonna see customers and sub customers. You are not going to uh, use the, you're not gonna be able to, to select a project from here. You can only select uh, sub customers. Now what could also be confusing about this is when I go create an invoice, let me show you real quick. I'm gonna create an invoice. When I click on my drop down menu, notice that I see both of these. See, one says cu customer, sub customer A. QuickBooks added a dash one because I called it the same way. And then it says uh, project. So this, it's sort of subtle, but it'll say there's sub project and customer. So that's how you differentiate the two. But of course, I, I never want to. Uh, you know, call a project the same thing as my sub customer. Now, the big question is, how would I even use sub customers, or why would I use a uh, a sub customer? Well, sub customers could serve as different locations or different mailing addresses. So, for example, I'm gonna do sub customer A. I'm gonna change this to, I'm gonna call it Summer Home. Okay. So, let's say, for example, I do multiple projects for Kathy Paulson. Uh, let me edit that again, make sure that's in there. Yeah, this is a summer home, give it the same name. So let's say that Kathy Paulson is a customer that I do multiple projects for, and even those projects will have multiple locations or maybe ship to addresses. So I would use the sub customer as a way to unite multiple projects together into a single billing entity. I think sub customers are mostly valuable for invoicing uh, purposes. So then when I create my projects, so I'm gonna go to my project here, this project here called sub customer A, I'm gonna edit this, and then I'm gonna call this uh, new pool, okay? So that's the, the new pool, but the, unfortunately, this project is under the customer's name. I can't, once I create the project, I can select under what customer it goes. So I'm not just gonna delete this and create a new project again. Okay, so, uh, okay, can't delete it yet. Not sure why it says I can't delete it yet, but I'll create a new project, new project, and then I'm gonna call this a uh, new pool. And then notice that I can make a project as part of the customer, or I can make it as part of the sub-customer. Okay, so I got both. I can make a project as, as the customer, or I can make the project for the sub-customer. So this is kind of a good example of how the sub-customers and the, and the projects work, can work together or could potentially be confusing. So New Pool is a project under Kathy Paulson under the Summer Home sub-customer. Uh, so I click on Save, okay? And then I'll go back here to All Projects, and you will notice here the, the New Pool project, uh, or not that one, hold on, let me go back. I got here new pool. So you got new pool under summer home. So you see it there very clearly. If I go to edit, um, I can see exactly what sub customer it belongs to. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the full path. I wish it did, but it tells you that this new pool belongs to the summer home. So in order to avoid confusion here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cancel these, these two projects here. And we'll cancel them all, okay? Just so we can see one thing and avoid any further confusion. So new pool is my new active project. Now a couple of things that are important, projects can actually be either marked completed or canceled. You need this project to be uh, active, not completed and not canceled, so you can use it, recall it, 
and use it for job costing and all that stuff. So we're, we're yet, we're not going to uh, uh, mark this completed or cancel yet. Okay. And notice that I can, I can filter my projects based on their statuses. So if I click on cancel here, I get a list of all my canceled projects. If I click on complete it, I get a list of all my completed projects. And if I click on in progress, uh, which is the default setting, I see my, um, all my in, in, in progress uh, projects. Now the, the projects themselves, they're just a peg holder. Now I have to create the transactions under the project. So the first uh, transaction I'm going to create is going to be an estimate. Usually that's how we're going to do it. So there's a couple of ways to do it. If you happen to be on this screen or the project screen, uh, you can actually go into the project itself by clicking on it. And then there's a, a button on the top right that says add to project. And then I can click on estimate. 